is Southampton versus Man United this Saturday, live only on BT Sport. Welcome back to the show. It's Richie McCormick here with you and it being Thursday, it's time to check in with John Giles. John, good evening to you. Evening, Richie. We've had another busy week. Uh, this time last week, it was all doom and gloom around Manchester United. We were talking about a 4-0 defeat to Brentford and how things looked completely dire for them. Uh, what a difference seven days makes and what a difference the result against Liverpool makes. They look like a team reborn on Monday night against Liverpool. Well, there's no doubt about that, Rich. You knew <laughs> they were excellent. You, you wouldn't. Nobody, I think, would have expected the, the performance to put on. Uh, it was it was very very good. But you'd have to say uh, Liverpool were far from their best as well. Uh, but man, it was Manchester United tonight. Nice, no doubt about that. And it looked like intensity wise, pretty much from the off, because there was that you know X factor of wondering about protests and whether or not the crowd would be on their backs. That seemed to be put aside fairly quickly. United seemed to be at it from, from minute one and really putting themselves about in a way that I don't think we've seen in the last six months to a year, never mind the two games that went before. No, it, it's, it's what's expected of Manchester United. Yeah. Uh, and we, we haven't had it for a long time. But you know, the, 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 the pressing and the enthusiasm, uh, the will to win, all the various things that you need to do. Uh, so it was, I didn't fancy them before the match at all especially playing against Liverpool. Uh, but they well deserved it. They did well from the start uh, and they outplayed Liverpool. Yeah, there was an interesting um, aside from Eric Ten Hag in his interview with Sky after the game where he was asked about their style of play and the expectations that he has of his players and he put forward the theory and this kind of got overshadowed by him effing and jeffing a little bit in his interview uh, whereby he said that it starts from the front essentially and that he wants his players especially in the front line to be pressing and harrying and working for the other parts of their team whereby they can't afford to have a forward player who might be conserving their energy for you know something that might happen a little further down the line uh, to my ear anyway that sounded like a, a not so thinly veiled prod in the ribs of Cristiano Ronaldo uh, but it seemed like they most certainly did play better without him in the side yeah well, well they keep talking about the pressing game uh, which you know I mean as if it's, it's as if it just come into into play in recent years I mean, they, 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 there's, there's, they talk about football in many ways. My take on football, which is when you haven't got the ball, everybody is obliged in the team to make an effort to get it back. And when you have the ball, everybody's obliged to use it as, as best they possibly can in any given situation. Now, that might be that the big centre-half has to boot it out when it's just trouble in the six-yard line. But that's, that's my best. They talk about, you know, systems and uh, all the various things and that's my I try to simplify it in a way to do it that when you haven't got it everybody does the back to get it back and that comes, brings us back to the point you made about Ronaldo I mean Ronaldo doesn't do that never did do that but he justified himself on the pitch by scoring the amount of goals he did uh, and being a, being a great player uh, now as we know uh, from the start of the season coming back for, for pre-season training Ronaldo wanted to go and th that stops any team spirit all the things that you're looking to get for teams to play together and I don't think it's any uh, 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 different really in any team but Ronaldo didn't play on, on the weekend as we know and I think most of the other players said right this is what we do this is what we have to do because he's a huge influence in the club he wanted to get away. He made it known he wanted to get away. And I think the manager should have let him go from the start. And with the bad defeats that they've had. Now, I can't blame Ronaldo on everything for that. Mm. But, he, but he's certainly not going to press and, and do what needs to be done at times. And they did it and did it well and played with a spirit that all teams should be playing with and hasn't been there for Manchester United. And totally, totally outplayed Liverpool who were poor by their standards since the start of the season, actually, yeah. and well deserved to win the match. Um, one of the best traits of a manager is not necessarily who they can go out and buy and identify in the transfer market, but it's making use of the tools that you already have at hand. And there's no question, I don't think, that inside of Marcus Rashford, there has always been a very good footballer. Inside of Jaden Sancho, there's a very good footballer. They haven't shown it necessarily in the past 18 months. Mm. Those displays that they put in on Monday night showed that Eri Ten Hag is capable of drawing the best out of them. I guess consistency is what you're going to want from them and showing that they can do that 
week in yeah. and week out from this point onwards. Yeah, but we have to see that now in the next match, Richie, yeah. and the match after that, and the match after that. That's the first time they've shown it for a long, long time. You know, when the, when the, the interim managers were there, was there, he, they didn't show it at all. So I think you know, it takes all it takes a manager like uh, uh, Ten Hag to get used to the situation, Richie. And I probably honestly believed, well, I get the best out of Ronaldo. He might want to go, but I'll talk him round and that. That didn't happen. But the rest of the players in the dressing room can see that and say, what, what's going on here? Mm. If he's not having to go, why, why should we all have it? The team spirit is a very thing. It's a, it's a very hard thing to get, Richie, and very easily to lose. That if everybody's not having to go together, it goes. And we haven't seen a, a, a team spirit from Manchester United for a long time. We did the other night. And I, think, I don't think it's a coincidence that Ronaldo wasn't playing in the match. Mm. Yeah, team spirit is certainly a very nebulous thing. The Casemiro signing is obviously going to be big for them as well. They might have one or two to come in afterwards. Uh, Anthony looks like it might get done from Ajax. But Casemiro we've probably seen a lot of with Real Madrid over the last decade or so. Looks like the kind of player that they probably need in midfield, United. Yeah, he's, well, he's been a very good player for, for quite a few seasons now. And it should be better. But it's, 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 it's down to the relationship that the manager has with the rest of the players, Richie. Mm. I think, you know, in the dressing room, if uh, the players are not all together, and they haven't been all together on, up to the... Yes, that's the first time we've seen them together. Uh, and I think the Ronaldo situation was, was a big part of that. Now, now they should be on the way to get this new player in who should be a help to them. But the players that they have there, I mean, Manchester United have got very, very talented players. And it's just their spirit in, 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 in recent times that, that they, they haven't showed in a way that they showed against Liverpool. Yeah. But I think that this, this, this lad coming in is, has been a good player for Real Madrid for quite a few seasons. But what they, what they need now is to repeat the performance that they had against Liverpool and to get a consistency to their game that you'd expect from Manchester United. Yeah. They have the players, in my opinion. Southampton away for them on Saturday lunchtime Gavin Bazunu might have a busy afternoon and the Southampton goal on the other side of that fixture last Monday John Liverpool again looking underwhelming again looking a little bit undercooked and <sighs> injuries certainly play a part but the, you know one of those consistent players in terms of constant appearances has been Trent Alexander-Arnold and he had another poor game for them on Monday Yeah well I, I, I've never been a fan of his as a full back I think when he's on the ball and going forward, Richie, he's excellent. His distribution of the ball is great. He makes goals. But I think what's happened this season, uh, he's at his best when he's going forward. He's not at his best when, he's, when he has to defend. And Liverpool, in the, the, the few matches that we've seen this season, you know, where they, 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 the last the three matches that they've played, have, def, have been defending more than we've seen them at any time since Klopp has gone there. So now he's not in, the, in, in his best part of his game, which is going forward. And, and the, other, the other night, sorry, against uh, Manchester, the Manchester United the other night, mm. I mean, he was very, very much at, at fault in the first goal. You know, he let, he let uh, uh, the left winger get behind him. And if you look at it again, he, 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 he wandered across the pitch back to the goals when, he, when, 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 when the winger went around him. Now, instead of flying back and getting into a position, and actually he might, he might have, uh, uh, that was uh, Alanga. Alanga, he might have got a, a, a little tackle on Alanga if, he, if he'd rushed into the box. Yeah. But he hasn't been a good defender. He's put on the ball, he's brilliant. But now that Liverpool are defending more, then he'll be exposed more. Yeah, it's a worry for them uh, for sure going forward. The injuries uh, showing no sign of abating for them. Football and off the ball, of course, brought to you by Sky. All the football you love in one place across Sky Sports. BT Sport and Premier Sports. We were both watching this on Sunday, John. Uh, Manchester City's game oh, uh, away to Newcastle uh, where it was a 3-3 draw and City for the first time in midfield certainly looked like they could be exposed. Newcastle a decent side but certainly not in the upper tier of the sides that they'll face later on in the season. No. The, well, Newcastle were very good. I think he's, he's, the, the manager's made good signings there, Richie. I think to be better. Um, you know, I think as the season goes on, they, they have more money to spend. Uh, but from City's point of view, um, I found there was no balance to them in midfield, Richie. You know, you had, you had De Bruyne, who is not playing in midfield. He's playing more forward. Uh, Rodri is, is the only player that's playing in midfield. And he, he's not a creative 
player. Yeah. Gundogan is a goal scoring midfielder. There's no doubt about that. Bernard Silva, I think, is, is the best midfield player. But he's playing either on the right wing or the left wing yeah. now. So when they have the ball, they're very, very good, Richie. But when they lose it, they're in big trouble. You know, you have to have a balance in the midfield that you have enough players going forward. Uh, you know, and they've got good forward players. They've got Haaland in the team now, and they did well to come back. Actually, haven't gone the two goals down. But I think they have to get the midfield, a situation in midfield where it's balanced. Do you stick like a... Calvin Phillips is obviously brought in for big money in the summer. Do you play him kind of side by side with Rodri then as a midfield partnership? Would that offer them more balance, do you feel? It, it, it will give them more balance, but it won't give them the, the good forward play mm. that you have at the moment. You know what I mean? I, I think he, he's very much like Rodri. The two of them are very, be very similar, a very similar job to do in the middle of the field. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have. I don't think him and Rodri would go together in the middle of the field because if you put him in, then you're losing one of the really, really good players, whether it be uh, um, uh, Bernardo or Bernardo Gunnar. Silva yeah. or one of the players in there. I'd have Silva in there with Phillips or Rodri. Okay, the, the, but they have to get that <clears throat> balance in there, Richie, because obviously they will score goals, but they could see too many goals, in my opinion. I mean, City that there's no need. No need for it. Yeah, certainly they look, they looked like they were uh, able to be cut open at will, particularly in that first half uh, last Sunday. I want to touch on Leeds as well, John, because last week, again, this is like how fast a week has gone. You were kind of worried about how they would perform throughout the season and that they might concede too many uh, and need to score, outscore themselves almost to try and keep themselves afloat. They looked very good against Chelsea. I don't know how much of an element it was Chelsea making them look good, but certainly the some of the signings at Leeds in the summer look to have settled in very quickly, Rocca and Tyler Adams in midfield in particular. Oh, yeah. yeah, Very, very good, uh, uh, Richie. I thought they'd be struggling against uh, uh, Chelsea. Uh, and Chelsea are one of the better, the better teams, as we saw. They were very good the week before against Spurs. Um, but Leeds were very good, yeah. especially in midfield. They signed three, three new lads uh, in there, Richie. Um, I'm, just, I'm just trying to have the names written down somewhere. I can't find them at the moment. I think it's Rocker uh, was in oh there yeah, as yeah, one of them. Got Tyler yeah. Adams, Mark Rocker, <clears throat> and Brendan Aronson. Yeah. Aronson. Aronson, yeah. yeah. And I haven't, I've never seen them play before, which, but they were very good. And, and their display against Chelsea was excellent. And they, they totally outplayed Chelsea, despite the, the, the stupid comments that Tuchel, uh, well, he's come out with a good few stupid comments in recent times. Uh, that they, they, they deserve to win the match. You know, they were bizarre. well outplayed. From the, they, 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 Chelsea started okay, but, but the goalkeeper made a bad mistake, as we saw. Yeah. But Leeds were the better team. I mean, they played like um, Bielsa's team at their best. Yeah. And I think where, where Jesse Marsh has been, been has done well in that, I think it got late, in the later stages of Bielsa that the players were overtrained. And not, and he wasn't getting a response from them. Yeah. Now they look like a Bielsa team to me at the weekend against Chelsea. So I think what he's done is tone down the training, Richie. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. In other words, he's not he's not doing it day in day out, day in day out as Bielsa was doing it. He's doing it on certain days, but giving the lads a break. So they have energy to play and energy to go and do what's needed to be done on the match days. And I think that's a, that's a very clever thing to do. And that's, that's what I believe he's done. And because they look like a Bielsa team there. And then the problem with Bielsa is that they, ran, they did run out of steam near the end of his, his uh, time at Leeds. Yeah. But it looks like he's got them doing it. But not, not, quite, not every day. He's left some energy there for the players to... Um, to do what needs to be done and they did it and did it well against Chelsea well deserved to win well yeah. deserved to win certainly uh, offers a more hopeful outlook for Leeds going forward this season John uh, could talk to you all night it's been an absolute pleasure to take these last few minutes out and speak to you this evening I uh, hope you have a good week thanks Richie cheers more after this Football on Off the Ball With Sky Liverpool face Bournemouth in the 3pm kickoff this Saturday live only on Premier Sports 